Iceland is a geologic masterpiece. Located in the North Atlantic Ocean, just south of the Arctic Circle, Iceland is the world's largest volcanic island, with a geologic origin dating back 20 million years. The island is a small part of this massive mid-Atlantic ridge, volcanic hot zone lying beneath the ocean's surface and dividing the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates. As these plates move apart, it causes the Earth's mantle to rise up and solidify into new crusts, which create volcanic mountain ranges. Most of Iceland's 364,000 people live in and around the capital city of Reykjavik. The rest of the country is home to an extreme environment housing 30 active volcanoes, one of which becomes active an average of every five years. Typically, this activity takes place beneath the ocean, but Iceland is one of the few places on the globe where the lava has managed to crawl out of the ocean to create a massive piece of land. This unique combination of emerging lava flows and glacial activity creates spectacular waterfalls, carving dramatic canyons and steep fjords into the island's freshly formed rock. Iceland is otherworldly, a surreal place that has served as the setting for epic cinematic tales such as Star Wars, Interstellar, and Game of Thrones. Now we finally get to see the land of fire and ice for ourselves and discover our own story. And when we roll off the ferry and onto the shore, the dream of overlanding Iceland will become our reality. This is the Nordic Series, Episode 7. Expedition Overland Season 5, the Nordic Series, is presented by General Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And in association with Patriot Campers, the ultimate in overland trailers. And by X Overland's official apparel partner, Vertex. As exciting as it is to be showing up to Iceland, it is a little bittersweet because this is where I say goodbye to my lovely bride. <laughs> Tomorrow she's gonna hop on an airplane and head home, be with Ryder and Eli. And uh, somehow I will manage to get through the rest of this trip without you. Well, Iceland looks really awesome so far. Just seeing these huge mountains, I can't wait to go explore. Uh, we're getting pretty close to port, so finally getting to be back in the trucks, and it'll be nice to have switch up the crew a little bit, get some new people. I'm sad to see my mom go, but it's okay. <laughs> I was looking forward to Iceland, but I didn't have any expectations. And then as soon as we saw the coastline, I got way too excited because we're going to be able to hit some uh, sit some dirt and get off pavement for the first time in in quite a while. We've got a lot of F roads to go explore in the middle of Iceland. But three, I get to see Ashley for the first time in three fortnights. It's like six weeks of being alone. I don't know why the boat's going so slow. We should have been there like 15 minutes ago. Somewhere not far away on shore, Ashley is watching our ferry approach. All right, Orion's online. Adigan's up. Phase two of the Nordic Expedition starts now. Rolling. Why are we in? What about your coffee? <laughs> <Ooh. Hello. laughs> Never leave me again. <laughs> Hello, my love. How 
How are you? Yeah, it's your turn. How are you? Now I'm like, I hide up for Good to see you. It's weird. Good to see you. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, this is the time I I let go of woman wife and. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Or, Take good or, care of him, Tanner. I, I'll try. <laughs> he, get, he likes his beard oil at night. <laughs> the first miles we will drive with our fleet are from the unloading ramp of the Smiral Ferry to the airport. But all is not lost, as even in this short drive, Iceland is already showing off its striking features, ensuring that my wife and I will be determined to return here someday to explore its wonders together. That's really beautiful. Indeed, that's rad. It's tough to leave when you've worked really hard your whole year to do something and not be able to fully complete it, but... Yeah. We'll come back. Yeah. Need to come back with the boys, the whole family. Yeah. Uh, that's what I want. Come back with everybody. Cyrus. You ought to come say goodbye to your mother. No. I have to remember the amazing part of the trip. Oh, the she. Yes. <laughs> the she. Oh. Yes. Yay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you for everything. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Let's see ya. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Go get those boys at home. I will. I love you. Love you. See you later. Have Thanks. fun. All right, Peter. Oh, so good. Oh. It was a lot of fun. Was fun. Thank you for everything. That was an awesome trip. Thanks for taking care of us. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. You yeah. you are in your own destiny now. <laughs> We're gonna miss it. <laughs> Shelly's on her way. It's never fun to say goodbye. It's it's an interesting thing to travel and film and run a business and do hard things with your wife. It's incredibly challenging, but incredibly rewarding. And I mean, it's, it's the life we've chosen. And it's tough to, I mean, I'll see her in three weeks, but it's more of the emotion of everything involved of what it takes to do what we do and she's just such a huge part of it so <laughs> when she leaves it leaves a pretty big hole and frankly she helps me do what i do so much that there's kind of a mental game shift that i have to go through when you change up when you're when she's here when she's not so called i pretty much have to do it right now which i've done it a hundred times kind of just go all right things are different now and i have this like switch i flip and it becomes like okay game face different game face right now Different game face. You ready? You ready for the ready. trip without your mama? Ready. I just switched my game face. Let's do this. It's all you need. The pain of goodbye is always hard, but it's worth it. It never gets easier, but it's a price Rochelle and I will continue to pay because there's a big world out there that we never want to stop exploring. Caroline, that was a very nice gift for the lady. I saw it and instantly thought of her, so. The Ring Road. It is Iceland's most prominent highway, connecting the island's major cities and towns, while taking travelers through some of the most visually stunning landscapes in the world. But we're here to push ourselves to explore Iceland and to reach the more difficult places to get to on the map. Being on the ring road for several hours now, our longing to finally hit some dirt gets the better of us. But that's okay because we are ahead of schedule. You guys wanna go check it out? It'll put us in camp later, but I mean, that's what we're here for, right? 
Yeah, let's go do it. I want to find some adventure. Looks like this road is about 12 kilometers and we can get pretty close to the glacier. Pretty windy. Uh, estimate roughly half an hour-ish. We'll see if that rings true. That's a right turn there, not a left. Put it on the marker. The F-Roads are a collection of interconnected off-pavement backcountry byways, popular with overlanders that wind their way through the center of the island. The F-Roads lack infrastructure, including fuel stops. Once you head into Iceland's interior, you're on your own. But before we do get carried away here, we do need to air down the tires. So I'm excited to be airing down Adigan because it has the apex valve stems, which are way faster than anything else we've ever experienced. All you need is some tools so you don't air down too far. Everybody else is gonna be pulling out whatever device, putting it on there, watch this. So right now we're at about 40 PSI. Ready for it? About 10 seconds, we're at 40 PSI, 25 PSI. What do we want to go to? 45, 30 PSI I think right now. We're at 25 PSI. We'll leave it at 25. So we're going to about 30 PSI. That way we can like rip around on these roads, but then still do highway. We're not really going for cush. Nah, it's 25 and they're not warm right now. So 25 pounds, good enough. Iceland's F roads have a reputation of being extremely rough. We have coped with 35 inch mud train tires all throughout Europe in order to have them at the ready once we arrived here. Since leaving port in Belgium, we've driven thousands of miles of pavement, only hundreds of miles off the beaten path. What we've seen has been amazing. Nordcap, the far western border of Russia in the top of Gelderpigen. But through it all, we've been dreaming of what it will be like to travel the F-roads of Iceland. See it, see it. <gasps> oh boy, there's the glacier. Whoa. <laughs> I was not expecting <laughs> That was wow. like legit. <laughs> that just showed up out of nowhere. Oh. I was waiting to hear that. I missed it. This is insane. What? Oh, wow! This road is worthy. It's crazy that we're driving right above a glacier, and if you look down behind us, this is the ocean with a black sand beach. And did you know that according to Instagram, we are now overlanding? This is something that we've been talking about since the start of the trip, you know? It's like to get off pavement into these places. Yeah, everyone told us about this as like, you know, oh, you have these crazy vehicles, we're well, gonna love Iceland, you know? So it, it seemed like that kind of, it, it felt like an event horizon for the whole crew. It was there, Iceland was there, but we weren't getting to it. And then we're here and look where we made it on our first, first hour yeah. off of pavement. Doesn't get much better than this. I mean, that is as good as it gets. It's awesome. A huge glacier, an ocean, mountains. Yeah, it's all in one shot. We can see the, the black beaches down there. All the way over there, man, it's so big. So where have we made it? Well, this is the eastern edge of the largest glacier in all of Europe, let alone Iceland. The Vatnajökull Glacier measures 3,127 square miles. The glacier covers more than 8% of the country with a maximum thickness of 3,280 feet. Vyatnajökull is an ice cap glacier. Something of this size is very hard to capture in the lens. 
one and done. Should we head to camp? We got about an hour to get out of here and then another hour, so our early camp turned into a late camp. Mm. It was worth it. It was worth it. It was definitely worth it. <laughs> yeah. Did you get any good pictures? Not yet. Oh. Next time. It was awesome. Yeah, that was amazing. This is why you come to Iceland. So we'll make our way to camp. What a beautiful experience that was. Council members, don't forget that we do need to have a council meeting by uh, this evening. This is the initiation of uh, new crew members meeting, correct? Affirmative. Should be a good night. If I try to push it up like this, I don't have enough strength. I have to use my legs. It's a little oh, bit heavy. Cool. It goes up like usual. Yeah, and this is all of our space. Currently filled up with Stuff. camera cases and alley boxes, but set your temperature. It's currently set for 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect. <laughs> I was saying, I figured we may as well get some dinner prep going now before the committee meeting or whatever it's called that I know nothing about. <laughs> Along with taking over Kurt's role as lead navigator, Ashley will be doing double duty for the team by serving as camp chef, which I'm very excited about because she is an excellent cook. She's incredibly skilled, but from the outside looking in, I'm not sure that she knows that yet. And we picked up some garlic infused olive oil, so that might go well together. So yeah, that's it. Should be good. Yay, I'm excited. Tonight is a very critical night as we must introduce our new members to the after eight ritual. Well, what I really wanted to talk about with the council is what are the official rules of introducing someone else uh, into the after eights. So I think we need them to like hold up eight fingers okay. or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and they have to link arms doing four fingers each so that yeah. it makes eight. Oh yeah, they're linked yeah. in unity. Mm -hmm. Together they make eight. Okay, I'm, I'm and the four of them together make sixteen, which is the total number, number of all of the total rules. Total. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So somebody needs together. to write this down. Okay, write it down. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're rules. All right. Ready. Richard, do you agree? Okay. <laughs> well, do we tell them now, or should we? Maybe dinner. Well, let's respect the rules. Well, after dinner. About? Yeah. We eat dinner. Then it's after eight. Don't they kind of have? Because it's after understand. eight, but we haven't eaten dinner, so it doesn't even matter whether it's after. Yeah, eight. we can't initiate it now because dinner has not been consumed. Right. So once dinner is consumed, it begins. Now that that's cleared up, the evening can continue. Tanner also needs to move into his new home. Serious business. I know. Over here, it's moving. I'm nervous. I got all those, you know. Butterflies when you're Sign moving in for the first I feel like I'm in college. Sign of a big commitment, you know? I get to meet my roommate. Yeah. So I heard you don't snore, right? Yep. Mm. Quietest sleeper in the world. That's uh, it's good news for me. Sound through the night. No getting up <laughs> ever. <laughs> Alright, so we are making Brie again. Because we've had him many times and everyone really likes it, but now that we have two new crew members, uh, we're gonna let them enjoy it with us. Who, D Dan, did you make this again? Yes. Oh, man, that has lava. Oh, yeah. That is <laughs> melted. That is melted. Liquid magma cheese. I'm uh, probably uh, down super low. Don't yeah, lose your taste buds. Uh, you know what, uh, what all of this means though? As soon as this is done. The ritual begins. The ritual. The ritual. Everyone eat fat. Is this the whole order here? <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 yes. All present. President, count for. Okay. Uh, new initiates need to stand next to each other, please. Please raise your left arm and your right arm. Now switch sides. That'll work. <laughs> Go ahead and interlock your arms. Like, okay. Perfect. 
Now each of you hold up the number four. This symbolizes in unity the number eight, which this thus begins the process and the initiation of the after eight. Cyrus, do you have the rules of the after eight? I do. Do you solemnly swear that you will uphold the rules of the after eight? I uh, solemnly swear. I solemnly swear. That I will uphold. <laughs> that I will <laughs> uphold. <laughs> the, rules. the rules of the after eight. The rules now of the that after you're eight. married to the after eight. <laughs> <laughs> married through the after eights. Go ahead, Cyrus, please read the after eight rules. Rule number one, must be consumed after 8 p.m. local time and before 8 a.m. if didn't go to sleep. Next rule. Okay. Rule number two, only after dinner or if only thing is to eat, you may have an after eight. Your notes are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Give this to me. <laughs> you can never consume an after eight on a boat. Will not be able to eat another after eight for three more days if it's declined three days in a row. Can only be paired with hot chocolate or Coca-Cola or by itself. <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> and after it has to be stored under 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. This is all the notes you took? No. Oh, there's no, eight. there's that's no. Eight. Okay, well, there's all, where's the, all the other rules of the after eight? There can only be eight. Yeah, but okay. then there's the eight rules of the eight, council of the eight. Yeah. We never made those. We will get to that. <laughs> so, you want to be part of the after eight club? But <laughs> <laughs> oh, you already said you would, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, now you can have an after eight. Start. What is an after eight? <laughs> Look, is that the first rule of after eights? Is you don't ask. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Right now. There's enough after eight for everybody to have. Mmm. Mm. There's more rules that we added to this that are not in here. This morning, we're spending a little extra time in camp. We're not pushing it very hard because it is the first morning that everybody is kind of getting up to speed. And what I mean by that is each time you introduce someone new to an expedition or a trip, just be aware that there is a calibration period that happens between people. Completely normal, plan for it. And if you've got the right people on your trip, it'll be no big deal. But this morning, got to give them a little time to gel, settle in, get their feet under them, and then That's we can start pushing again. Eggs. So yeah, cool. Thank you for organizing. Sweet. Looks, Looks great. great. Yeah. Yes. It always seems to get organized, then a week goes by and it's a trash bag. Yeah. Not yeah. this time. I need a paper towel. Just going over the trucks this morning. It's my first morning in camp. I'm going to be in charge of making sure these guys are all staying tip-top mechanically. And one of the most important things you can do is get your hands on the components. You can't tell that something's loose just by looking at it. You need to touch it, you need to wiggle it, um, and you'll find a lot of things. So it's a really good idea to always just in the mornings do a walk around and then that way if you do find something you have an opportunity to fix it before it may leave you stranded in the middle of nowhere. And we are gonna be going to Reykjavik tomorrow and we're going to one of the best places if we do find an issue to fix it. So this is the time we wanna find an issue if there is one. Am I in the proper setting for this? Cause like, look at these photos. Everything mm -hmm. just seems to be coming out all Yeah, it's kind of flat. Up. Yeah. So in this situation, you have the right idea of being a little bit more punched in, because unless you want to show the campground, you want to just frame something dead center in the shot. Mm -hmm. And it may work for your own personal needs, but to be more artsy, you can offset it. It's called a rule of thirds. Okay. And so you can put it off, like if you want to say have like, that glacier there but you want to show the mountain peaks over there you can have the glacier framed 
on the right or left side of the frame and then you can have the other side and you don't want to put the horizon of the mountains in the middle you want to either have it two-thirds up or a third down oh, okay essentially yeah say so like say with shots like that yep and this yep crap yeah Along with being one of our lead expedition photographers and ex-Overland's fleet manager, Tanner even has his own professional photography business on the side. When it comes to using a camera, he knows of what he speaks. And after just a few minutes of Tanner's instruction, Dan has clearly become a man on a mission to capture the best photo of the trip. Yeah. See, that's another situation where I would move it we have hung around camp a little longer than usual, but I think it's been time well spent. And our new team members have adjusted to their roles. It's time to push hard to get to Reykjavik, and we're ready for it. Pretty insane. Glacier's right there. Mountains are right there. So we're gonna go enjoy Iceland with this newfound excitement. I'm just gonna suck it out of Tanner and like get his joy and his excitement like throw it into my veins, I already feel it. Every time I see him out with a camera, I'm like, I gotta get out too. The big thing that I am super excited for is just the nature photography potential here. I mean, it's Iceland. This is a dream come true for sure. Iceland has so many gifts to give and, and I can't wait to experience them all, so. No words to describe it. How thankful I am to be here. I mean, look at that. I just stepped onto a movie set in real life. This seems like a place where, I mean, a lot of sagas are written in Iceland. I don't know if all of them are, but this is, this is the place where I feel like I could write a saga about this place. Like, it's just, it's built for feeling magical and beautiful. It's, it's wondrous, I think, is the way to describe it. It's, it's a very special place. Heading out to one of Iceland's most iconic natural features, the black sand beaches. The three rocks here are known as Rhinestronger, or Rhinestranger, Rhinestronger. Uh, anyway, the story goes that these three rocks are actually trolls who were just pulling a ship onto shore when the sun came out. They hadn't noticed the sunrise and were turned into stone on the spot. I can't think of a better place for Dan to practice his newfound skills. So the ISO is your sensitivity to the light. Right. So the higher the number, the more sensitive it is, meaning you're gonna get a faster shutter speed, but it's gonna eventually get grainy, kind of get that staticky grain yeah. in there. But when you're on a tripod, you're not hand holding it, shutter speed doesn't matter unless you're doing something specific, but okay. so I want it to be as clean as possible. And in fact, I kind of want it to be slower because I want to try to blur some of the wave movement. Yeah. So watch this. If I swing it around and then point down, it's still kind of cool that we have the ocean there, but the focus is the rocks. Right. So I might try something like that. And that's the beauty of digital is you can do whatever you want, try it all. You're not spending a bunch of money and try to focus on, you know, get the bigs, but then look at like more detailed shots and stuff too. Try to get more creative, get more artsy kind of thing. Okay. The beach we're walking on began as roughly formed rocks made out of molten lava, but the mechanical action of the waves has forged them into the unique phenomenon of black sand. I am both excited and nervous about the forging process that Iceland may yet bring to us. I guess we're gonna find out. We are heading into a legendary shop to have our trucks looked over. And for what we're about to do, I don't think there is a better place on the planet we could be going. With a good bill of health on the trucks from Tanner this morning, we will just need to have the usual maintenance items addressed. Things like air filters, oil changes, and alignments, especially on the new Tundra, now that it's had time to break in. I'm also wanting to drop the differential fluid in the Forerunner as it's due for its extreme use interval. I'm also excited to introduce the team to a legend, Emil Grimson. Ah, my dear friend Emil, 
What a legend. Immel is the founder of Arctic Trucks, and he's built Arctic Trucks into the most recognized expedition brand of vehicles on the planet. He has many records under his name, including the first crossing of Antarctica with the E7 Expedition in four-wheel drives. He also led the Top Gear team to the Magnetic North Pole, and he's guided Prince Harry around for a bit too in Antarctica. So I guess you could say he's kind of a big deal. But you know, you would never know it from him as he's extremely humble in his accomplishments. I personally got to know Emil on the E7 Greenland Expedition in 2018, and I'm honored to call him my friend. Welcome to Arctic Trucks, the mecca of all things amazing in the vehicle world. These guys are one of the very best in, the very, in all of the world when it comes to building expedition vehicles. Hands down, period. Uh, we're using them. They allowed us to come in here to get uh, the vehicle serviced. Oil changes, looking at the brakes, readjusting the front coils on this truck uh, after they've settled after the first 6,000 miles here, get that all tuned up. And just a big look through of all of the vehicles before we head into the F roads for the next two and a half weeks or so. Uh, if there's any problems, we want to know about it here, not out there. Here's a new cupping that's happening in here. Yeah. You can see, that, see how that's oddly shaped. Mm -hmm. This is rounded off weird and the, the blocks are getting all misshapen. Yep. That is a byproduct of an alignment issue. Okay. So what happened was we put new shocks on that, new coils, and then we went right on the expedition. When they're really new, they're really sprung and stiff, okay. but then they, they just break in a little bit and they, they sag. So when you build a truck, you anticipate that. But we built the truck and left right away on the expedition. Yeah. Well, as it came down, it changes the geometry of the alignments. Okay. Then we drove 6,000 miles with that change happening. And then that is indicated in the tire wear in the tread. If you pay attention to all that, your, your truck talks to you. Okay. So, yeah, that's what's happening here. So this, as we put the meat on and put all this on, this, this compressed over the thousand miles or so, 2000. Okay. And now it's settled out. It's where it's gonna live and now we're realigning everything. Okay. We also, you can see on this, we brought it back down. That's how much the, sh the, oh, wow. the coil settled. So they take the wrench, they turn it down, and that's now brought this back to the a preload up, lifts the vehicle. This should ride a whole lot better. Cool. And it'll probably stay here for quite a while through the shock's service life. Cool. A few minutes of looking over the vehicles with the team at Arctic Trucks has put me at ease. The XO fleet is not just in good hands, it is in the greatest of hands. So I think it's best we get out of their way and tackle a quick bucket list item. To snorkel between two massive tectonic plates. The only place in the world where you can do it. So we just came from Arctic Trucks and we are all suited up because we're gonna go snorkeling. Uh, in between two tectonic plates, which is pretty awesome. It's some of the clearest water in the world, so we'll be going through here and out and around. It's between the North American plate and the Eurasian plate, and apparently it's some of the clearest water in the world, so this should be super exciting. The water here is cold, hovering just above freezing, but considered to be the clearest in the world with visibility reaching 400 feet. We'll be wearing dry suits, of course. I just hope they work. Not this. Got me too. Stark, whatever it's called. Wet lens is wet. There we go. Wait, you guys got it. I love snorkeling. Let's go snorkeling. So majestic. Okay. 
The fissure can reach 60 to 80 feet deep here. And if one is dry suit certified, you can even dive this fissure, which someday I'd like to say I've done. This is amazing. Snorkeling here is super cool. We got to go over top of all this fissure and all that. It's definitely a place I'd want to come back once I'm dry suit certified. How you doing? <laughs> you look cold, Dan. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all my clothes are soaked. <laughs> oh no. That was fun. What so you were in a wetsuit instead of a dry suit? 70, 50 to 70 years to purify. Mm. That's a weird feeling to just drink it. Like it that. is a weird feeling. Like being in this suit, I'm expecting salt water. You just have a little drink? Oh, we're having a drink. It's kind of cozy to just float. Oh boy. Over <laughs> <laughs> you're my friend, and you're my friend. We're all friends. We're all friends, man. <laughs> all right, trying to warm up. Get from action. Arctic trucks, get our trucks, uh, and uh, really cool. cool. Yeah, might get out of this dry like suit because right it like is uh, a little restricting. Where did the water come from? The glacier. So oh, the glacier's okay. back in there. It, it like just seeps through the ground through all the lava. And takes 50 to 70 or 50 to 70 years to come out right there, and then you get to dive it. You grab a water bottle. It's all filtered. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> so Cyrus, do you like this type of schooling, or do you like sitting in class kind of schooling? This type of schooling. <laughs> I can't help but think about all of Cyrus's learning while he's not in school, but I know it comes at a cost. Back home in Montana, it's homecoming week at Cyrus's high school and he's missing his girlfriend. At X Overland, while we gain so much through our adventures, we do give up a lot to do what we do. There's just no way around that. And as Sai's father, I just hope his sacrifice has been worth it. I'm sitting in that truck right there. Back at Art of Trucks, Ashley and I head upstairs to get the lay of the land from the pros. Uh, logistics a little bit like the main road is obviously around the whole island okay which is easy to drive you can take every car then you have the west fjords here which which basically are not part of the main road but you, there is a main road going all around those west fjords and same goes for the east fjords okay so this location here approximately along with the west fjords we can say these are similar areas these are deep valleys and fjords which have been carved out by ice age but like there's a like a diagonal line going past the island mm -hmm. where all the volcanic and geothermal activity is more or less okay so that that's the diagonal line from this peninsula more or less up to here okay so the island is formed on the tectonic plates gliding apart okay so this is the oldest part and this is the oldest part so the new geology it's all around this diagonal line. Okay. That's the fresh stuff. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Having that in mind, we obviously have the three main glaciers here in the highlands, and there are two mountain roads that pass from, let's say, south to north, uh, past these two glaciers. It's this road here, and it's a road that goes here. These okay. are the two like main highland roads that we use in Iceland. I just wanted to say, to this man, we have sat in cars for a long time and got to know each other and you helped me out, you got us all the context, all the context for shipping trucks over here and back home and stuff. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Pleased to see you here. I will come back. Yeah, you will. We need to um, do something more later on. Okay. Yeah. That sounds Not great. Not a Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> sweet. Yeah, or, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Oh, or, or, yeah. Cool. Well, and thank you. Thank you, sir. That was awesome. Welcome. Appreciate it. We'll go explore Iceland, and thank you for letting us drive around in your country. Yeah. You're most yeah. welcome. We'll keep your secrets safe. <laughs> Maybe here, you can say Arctic trucks, and you helped us. No, I just say... I would go on the blue with your black yeah, pin, yeah. yeah? And I make a... Chief. Nice. Perfect. Thank you. You guys saw it too. You gave us the info. Should I be up north here? Whatever you like. The 
Nice. Perfect. With our trucks in top condition, it's time to meet up with another friend of mine that both Emil and I share from the Greenland Expedition. He's one of the very best Arctic mechanics in the world, and my friend. Long time no see. How are you? I'm awesome, are you? I'm awesome too. Good to see you. It's good to be in Iceland. Yeah. I told you I'd finally Ring. make it. I know. Uh, it's okay. During the Greenland expedition, I found out that Torfi can fix anything, and his skill sets are beyond comprehension. But like I said, that's a story for another time. <laughs> a lot of people here. Yeah. Everyone, this is Torfi, <laughs> the greatest man on earth. No. No. I'm Tanner. Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, Dan. Yeah. Dan. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Caroline. Hi. Hi. Ready. So, if we want to make some kilometers tonight mm -hmm. and just get to wherever we want to go, yeah. we could do that. It just depends on if you want to stay in town or get out of town. We'd love to get out of town. And then we go out of town. Okay. It's easy. <laughs> easy decision. Yeah. We don't have to go far. I have a, uh, like a mountain hut close by. Okay. We can go there. Yeah. So we can stay in the hut or outside or whatever. Man, we should go to the mountain hut and make plans. Okay. Take some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah. That, it's okay. a part internet connection and everything. It's nice. Okay. Torfi thinks he can be with us for a night or two. And even though this is all happening a bit on short notice, he only needs an hour to grab some food, a little gear, and put his camper on his extremely cool and extremely modified 1990 double cab Toyota Hilux, which I can't wait to learn a little bit more about later. But we better get going, because the dark night of Iceland is quickly coming. We just pulled onto this F road. Uh, Torvi's leading the way with Clay in their Arctic truck, and we just aired down Clone and all the trucks to about 20 PSI. It was bumpy last time on our first F road, so definitely taking her down a bit. It's a wet one. According to my rain forecast, by about 7 to 9 p.m., this whole area will, the rain will have moved out in theory. Excellent. You definitely couldn't ask for a better guide here than Torfi. I think the problem with this place is I don't know when to stop filming. <laughs> right. Right, right. He's a long-standing member of the prestigious Icelandic search and rescue team, and his daily job with an instrumentation and communications towers keeps him in the remotest regions of Iceland year-round. I did not expect this at all. Like that is probably one of the most epic trails I've ever seen. And the scenery around here is like quintessential Iceland. It is so amazing. And there's like some sheep down there. It, this is pretty awesome. Yeah. Just enjoy it. It's like it's your home. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. This is so much fun. There's this a bathroom so on the outside here. So we open up the door. Ah. Here, okay. Bottom, yeah. In order. This does not work. Okay. Okay. It's just a, just a, uh, this metal thing that goes down. In the dirt where we have a uh, this crane, okay. we shift over so you can hear it's constant running, mm -hmm. so it doesn't freeze. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like this the whole year. Hmm. That's smart. That's Torfi told us to make ourselves at home, and he meant it. You know, you can study all the maps and pour over all the websites, read all the posts and comments, but in the end, when you're traveling around the world, it's the locals who make you feel at home. And here in Torfi's hut, sheltered from the storm outside, I know we're going to experience the best of Iceland. Next time on the Nordic series, we head into the heart of Iceland. We will see for ourselves the enchantment and mystery within the land of fire and ice. And in so doing, see if we have something left to discover within ourselves. Join us next time on episode eight of the Nordic series.